Hey, what's up there, Diego Solfers? Today is a follow-up video to my last video on uh, how to diagnose problems with your catalytic converter. I'm going to be doing a video on how to uh, bench test an O2 sensor. As you can see, I got an O2 sensor here. This came off of a Chrysler PT Cruiser. Now, I don't know if this uh, O2 sensor is good or bad. It's probably good since the car ran okay. But uh, we're going to be bench testing this today. Okay, yeah, but before we start a testing procedure, let's go over quickly different type of uh, O2 sensors that are out there and what these uh, wires are for on each sensor. Now here, as you can see, I got a four wire sensor. Uh, there are O2 sensors that only come with one wire, two wires, three wires, and then what we have here. Um, as you may know, oxygen sensor is a voltage producing sensor. They measure the amount of uh, oxygen in the air or in the exhaust fumes that are coming out of the combustion chambers and produce a voltage based on that reading. And then they send that voltage to your ECU and then your ECU gets to uh, fix the air fuel mixture that goes to your uh, engine. So if you have a sensor that only has one wire, that one wire is the signal wire. That's the wire that sends the voltage reading to your ECU and those sensors are grounded through the exhaust pipe and your chassis. Uh, and that's how they work. So if you, got a, and if you got a sensor with two wires, those sensors have one wire is going to be your signal wire again and the other wire is going to be your ground, your sensor ground wire. That's a little bit more reliable than uh, just relying on the, the exhaust pipe and uh, the chassis grounds. Uh, for, for grounding your sensor. Alright, so next up, a sensor with three wires. Those sensors, uh, they come with a heater inside your sensor and that heater helps your sensor reach operating temperature which is 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Your O2 sensor is not going to produce any voltage unless it reaches 600 degrees. And since three wire and four wire sensors come with a heater inside the sensor, that helps it reach the operating temperature faster your computer gets to fix the air fuel mixture a lot quicker and your car runs a lot smoother overall. So with the three wire sensor, your again one wire is going to be your signal wire, the other two are going to be for your uh, heater, are going to be your heater wires and those sensors are grounded through your exhaust pipe and the body as well. Okay last but not least what we got here, a sensor with four wires. Uh, these sensors they have one wire again for your signal wire. Uh, the other one is going to be your sensor ground and the last two are going to be your heater wires. And these are probably the more reliable sensors since they not only are heated but they also have their own grounding wire. Okay, so next on to the bench testing procedure. Uh, when bench testing an, a heated oxygen sensor, you want to first measure the resistance that's for the internal heater in the sensor and then uh, compare that to, to your spec, make sure that's within spec. And generally speaking, the, the two white wires are going to be for your uh, for the heater. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to turn on your uh, multimeter and put the settings on ohms. And 200 is a good setting since uh, most ohm readings for your uh, heater for the oxygen sensor are going to be less than 200. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. So we got about seven, seven and a half ohms of resistance for the sensor. Now I don't know if this is a good reading, I don't have a manual for this, but just doing this to show you the testing procedure. Next it's time to see whether this oxygen sensor can produce oxygen or not. And uh, since they don't produce any voltage unless they reach 600 degrees, we're going to be using our propane torch to heat it up. And uh, also since this flame is going to be over this uh, sensor, you know, it's going to take away all the oxygen. And the less oxygen it, the sensor uh, senses, the higher the voltage uh, reading we're going to be getting. And we're looking to get close to 1 volts when this thing, uh, when we heat it up properly. And when we remove this, we're looking for the reading to shoot down very quickly to pretty close to zero or nothing. Okay? And obviously, you want to put your setting on your multimeter to, to 2 volts since, you know, <laughs> We're measuring between 0.0 to 1 volt and also connect your wires. If you're doing it on a four wire uh, sensor like us, you're going to connect your two wires from your multimeter to the other two wires that are not your heater wires. And if you're going to be doing this on a one or a three wire sensor, you want to find your signal wire obviously, connect your uh, one of your test leads to that and then you want to ground the other other test lead and uh, a two wire they're both you know you connect these two to each wire since one is for ground and one is for your signal wire okay all right now the 
it shouldn't take a whole lot of time to get this all wound up. There we go, we're getting some voltage. It's going, it's going. There we go, that's pretty close to one volt. Now it's gonna get off and watch it go down. Yeah, it moves down, but it's not really that fast. <laughs> As far as I know, it's supposed to go down a lot quicker. There we go. Okay, that was better. Maybe it's just not heated properly all the way. Let's flip this around so both sides get, get hot. There you have it folks. Now this is not the best way of uh, testing an O2 sensor, but you know, it's uh, within limited resources. It's uh, it's a good way of testing O2 sensors. Uh, in order to do it perfectly and correctly, you need a scanner capable of live data and capable of graphing the sensor, you know, the voltage reading from the sensor. You know, the voltage reading from the sensor needs to be within a certain time frame. You know, as you saw when we first removed the torch the first time off the sensor, it took a while for it to, to go down. But you know, again, as it got, as we warmed up all the way around it, then it was moving down a lot faster now. Going from close to one volt to zero or close to zero, it needs to happen within a certain time frame and the only way you can accurately measure that is with a scanner capable of graphing it. Okay, so with that said, I hope this video helps people out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.